America's Mayor Live. Today is a very special day. Today is a day in which we establish with just two clips that Washington is the perfect place to do a sequel to the movie Dumb and Dumber. You, of course, remember that movie, right? With Jim Carrey, Jeff Daniels. They're two imbeciles. Quite a bit brighter than Joe Biden, but two imbeciles. Well, uh, over the last, I guess it's two days, I've seen really um, very dumb things in Washington because I go back to uh, the Ford administration. I work there. I think maybe the last two days, I've seen the two dumbest, most ignorant, silly. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to ask you to tell me which is dumber. I know which person is dumber, but I want you to tell me which is dumber. Now, here's the first one. This is AOC pretending she has a brain, which is hard for her. Uh, has been a struggle all her life. Uh, I don't even know if she you know, got the calculations right when she was a bartender hate to have one of her drinks but she's trying to um she's trying to get Bobolinsky. you know now this guy's working at like twice the iq that she is and uh she gets to the point where she's uh, harassing him and telling him well, what crime did you observe uh, biden commit now it's that you know the kind of crimes that biden uh committed uh, yo-yo, you generally you don't observe like a bribe. We're, we're very lucky in this case because Joe Biden admitted that he paid a bribe. Uh, that's the whole tape, you know, where he says, if you don't, if you don't get rid of the prosecutor, you don't get the one billion. That is a classic bribe. I wouldn't expect you to know that, um, AOC. I really wouldn't expect you to know that because I, you can't imagine what low regard I have for your intellect. I mean, it's really at a very low level. Now, you, you had the number of states wrong. I mean, that's almost as bad as not knowing the reason for the Civil War, like our candidate didn't know the reason for the Civil War. But um, so here... You're trying to get him to name uh, crimes. He actually named three right away for you. But since you're an ignorant moron, uh, you didn't get it. So you harassed him some more. Let's play this. And then uh, then the one crime that I probably know more about than anybody in America. A quick question. Simple. Is it your testimony today that you personally witnessed President Joe Biden commit a crime. I believe the fact that he was sitting with me while I was putting together a Did business Did you deal, witness the president commit it, a crime? Is it your testimony today? Yes. And what crime do uh, you have you witnessed? How much time do I have to go through it? It is simple. You name the crime. Uh, Did you watch him steal something? Cor corruption statutes, it, RICO and conspiracy. What is it? What is, Farah, what is the crime, sir? You, you specifically you, just, uh, you keep up you asked me to answer the question i answered the question no Rico, you're obviously not familiar with corruption excuse statute. me sir excuse Farah. me sir excuse me sir rico is not a crime it is a category what uh, is no. the, it's the category crime? of crimes that you're then charged you under, have charges long hundred you have charges statutes. sir yeah. please you want me to name, name the exact statute sir, under rico yes I'll, well, it's funny, in this committee room, everyone's not here, there's over. Hey, idiot. This is a, a citation. This is what lawyers do. They like cite statutes. Uh, that 18 uh, there, if you were really a congresswoman and understood the law, you would know immediately when you see 18 that it's a crime because every, virtually every uh, uh, federal crime is under uh, the 18th title of the U.S. Code. Uh, the one that you see later is uh, 1962. Uh, the name of that crime is Racketeering Influence Corrupt Organization Statute, otherwise known as RICO. Yes, it is a crime. It is not a category of crime. Crimes don't have categories, idiot. Crimes are 
uh, wrongful acts for which you go to prison. This happens to be one where I've put a substantial number of people in prison for 100 years. So I kind of know it's a crime. Uh, go tell fat Tony Salerno that Rico is not a crime. And he sat in jail until he died because he, he was convicted of a category. Uh, just in case uh, people want to see the statute, just to show you that she does not know what she's talking about because she is a, I don't even know if she has an education. You know, I, I mean, like went to school and passed exams. And you realize the moronic things that she says? Uh, the one point she, I think she said we had 47 states. Uh, she had no idea that there were three branches of government. Uh, why we elect her, it's kind of an indictment of, of our people. It's an indictment of just how brainwashed we are by the Democrat Party. I mean, this is a woman that would have a hard time getting a job. I think now, you know, even as a bartender, and I was a bartender, I think that I think that'd be a tough, tough job for her. But they are so intent on lying, cheating, misrepresenting that they resort to that idiocy. Uh, it's pathetic. Could be one of the dumbest things I've seen a congressperson do. Uh, maybe I'm more sensitive to it because this is a statute that I know better. And I apologize when I said she couldn't be a bartender because I was in, <laughs> I was insulting you by suggesting that she could. Now, I was a bartender. In fact, it's the only job that I was fired from. And I'm not, I'm not going to tell you how or when. I'll, I'm going to have to do something for me first before I tell you. I, I think it's I know the, the story. only job I'm not say. that I was fired from, so I hardly would look down on that job, boy. Only one. Uh, now, the second one is equally as um, dumb. Or I guess we're on the dumber part of dumb and dumber. And this is from a, a notorious uh, uh, poorly educated, uh, poor, poor woman. She went to an Ivy League school where they stopped giving an education about 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, they stopped giving an education uh, in things like history and geography and philosophy and and uh, basically did Marxist indoctrination. They spent so much time at Marxist indoctrination that uh, you came out a graduate. And and I uh, do we have the do we have her uh, back during her confirmation hearing? Uh, we're getting that as we speak, so we'll, we should have that in a moment. Well, this is this is the woman you, you'll remember her. This is the woman who doesn't know what a woman is. Uh, and she's on our Supreme Court, which is frightening to think of. Yeah, I would think that um, as, as, as a job interview for the Supreme Court, you wouldn't have to be asked, could you define a woman? But I really do think you wouldn't get the job if you said, I, I don't, I can't. I would think if you can't define a woman, you wouldn't be allowed to be on the Supreme Court because you would, you, I, I sort of mark the paper, too dumb or too poorly educated, or needs remedial education, or something like that, you know? Uh, do we have her uh, uh, doing that, or shall I get to her newest uh, idiocy? Well, the newest idiocy, newest idiocy happened uh, 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 with a very, very important argument yesterday at the Supreme Court, Murphy versus Missouri. It's a case in which um, the attorney Attorney General of Missouri, now a United States Senator, uh, sued the Biden administration and a whole a whole bunch of their uh, co-conspirators co and uh, Twitter, Facebook for conspiring to um, censor, for, for example, the hard drive, where there were hundreds of conversations between the administration and uh, the people who uh, who censored it. And there was even an early warning from the FBI that the hard drive was going to come out. Now, remember, the FBI knew it was valid to eight months, yet they uh, participated in the fraud that it was somehow Russian collusion. And uh, the administration put pressure on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, a couple of others to... Um, not publish this Russian collusion. Uh, the, the reason this is important is 
A violation of the First Amendment can only be brought against the government. Now, this requires a little knowledge of constitutional history that it's uh, absurd that a Supreme Court justice wouldn't have. The first 10 amendments to the Constitution called the Bill of Rights are rights. The rights belong to you as a person, and they uh, protect you against the government. So if one of those things is done to you by a private person, if they deprive you of your right of free speech, you don't have a violation of the Constitution. You might have something else. You might have uh, extortion, or, but not a violation of the Constitution. Only the government can violate the first 10 amendments to the Constitution because the first 10 amendments to the Constitution act as a limitation on the power of the government, which is why your statement and question yesterday was extraordinarily ignorant. You asked uh, the Attorney General, uh, my biggest concern is the First Amendment hamstringing the government in significant ways in the most important time periods. Uh, that's the reason for the First Amendment. That's why we have it. We have it to hamstring the government. Of course, we have it to hamstring the government in significant ways. That's the only time it really is a protection against something bad and in important time periods. Uh, I don't know if you understand the First Amendment. This would also indicate that you don't understand the other amendments because all of them act as a uh, limitation on government power. For example, the Second Amendment, which I'm sure you're not in love with, which allows you to defend yourself and carry a gun, is a, um, is a limitation on the power of the government to take guns away from you. We decided we'd be safer if we could defend ourselves and didn't have to depend entirely on the government. You may disagree with that. And you have every right to amend the Constitution. Uh, but you have no right to ignore it. Um, more importantly, you don't have a right to be a law school graduate if you don't understand it. So uh, things have gotten really, really bad. This is... Um, and this is enormously uh, uh, concerning because if you don't really have a basic understanding of the First Amendment, uh, you're going you're to make an awful lot of uh, fascist-like de decisions on the Supreme Court. Uh, I, I didn't expect much from you, but I did expect you understood the First Amendment. But let's see what happens, and let's see how you vote in the case. And um, We have the video. And I and I I, I would, uh, but I don't think you'd accept it graciously. I'd send you a biology book to teach you what a woman was. I mean, I'd be willing to do that with a, a few uh, suggestions as to the chapters to go to that describes it. So the next time you're asked, you won't make an ass out of yourself. Okay. Let's play the clip. Let's play the clip of one of the dumb word woman. Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. The meaning of the word woman is so unclear and controversial that you can't give me a definition? Senator, in my work as a judge, what I do is I address disputes. If there's a dispute about a definition, people make arguments, and I look at the right. law and I decide. Well, so I'm not. The fact that you can't give me a straight answer about something as fundamental as what a woman is underscores the dangers of the kind of progressive education that we are here. here. And th there isn't a dispute about what a woman is. It's a, uh, it's a call science. It's a scientific uh, definition. It's a fact. Uh, it's been... Uh, kind of that way for, I don't know, before we can count time, 5,000 years ago. I don't know if you ask some, somebody emerging from, uh, from the trees and beginning to think and talk, what's a woman? He, maybe it's a man, he, he'd point at one for you. Oh, that's a woman. Huh? It's getting ridiculous, isn't it?
Uh, uh, please don't think that this is a joke. I shouldn't do it as a joke. Um, what you're watching with both of them is the culmination of a hundred years or so of communist Marxist infiltration of our education that has uh, become almost completely successful in the area of public education. They control the teachers union and they're uh, don't, don't kind of soften it. They're communists and they'd like to see the downfall of the United States in, in the way that we think of the United States as a two party, uh, a republic where the rights of the people who are opposed to them are given the same respect as the, the rights they have. They don't want that. They want a one party system like they have in certain states, New York being one of them. New York is not a, a New York is a democratic state in the worst sense of the word. Democratic, like the party of slavery, Democrat. It's not a democratic state like the definition of a democracy. Uh, best example of that is when I went in to vote for judges this year, there were five judges on the ballot. None of them were opposed. That's more traditional in uh, uh, Germany when it was communist or Nazi or China today or, uh, or Venezuela, where you have all these unopposed positions. Uh, what what happened there is not is very common in New York City. It's very common in Chicago. It, it's the rule in Atlanta. And uh, if you think those are democracies, well, then you don't understand democracy. It's a one party government that has the same kind of power the Communist Party has, exercises it for almost the same reason to redistribute wealth and to tell you what to do and to brainwash your child so that they have power, which is what our schools are now. Teachers Union does not exist to do anything to benefit your children. It has nothing to do with benefiting children. And I tell you that from eight years of negotiating with them, I'm not talking about teachers. I'm talking about the union. But I, I'm not one of these people that has to go around saying all teachers are wonderful because they wouldn't belong to that union if they were wonderful. If they were really strong Americans, they'd quit a communist union. And they'd quit a union it probably is one of the reasons why our children now 27th, 28th in the world. But maybe I'm asking for something like courage. Oh, my goodness. Courage. We can't have that. So uh, we'll take a short break and we'll uh, be right back with a, uh, a topic. Uh, let's call it Biden going down, Trump coming up which is the way we want it to go, right? The foundation to live is on its promise to do good and never forget the sacrifices America's greatest heroes have made for us. Heroes who risk their lives to keep our communities and our country safe. Heroes like United States Marine Corps Captain and Pilot John Jeremy Sachs. Captain Sachs sustained fatal injuries when his military aircraft crashed during training, killing him and five other service members. He's remembered by loved ones as courageous, brilliant, and devoted to his career, family, and friends. John is survived by his wife, Amber, who gave birth to their second daughter three months after his death. Tunnels and Towers paid the mortgage on the family home for Amber and their two daughters. The foundation has helped over 1,000 military and first responder families navigate the worst of times by removing the burden of a mortgage payment. Our nation's heroes and their families need your help now more than ever. Donate $11 a month to Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. T2T.org. That's T, the number two T.org. T2T. T dot org. Please donate now. 
the new year, we're having the biggest sale ever on overstock clearance and brand new products. For example, save 60% on our Goose Down comforters, the best comforters ever. They go perfectly with our My Pillow bed sheets and duvet covers. Save 25% on our brand new kitchen towels. They're made with the same technology as our famous My Towels. Our initial quantities are extremely low, so get them now before they go. Our seasonal flannel sheets are finally in. You save up to 50% and they sell out fast every year, so order now. They're truly the best flannel sheets you'll ever sleep on. Or save up to 80% on all our clearance items. And this is where it gets even better. For a limited time, your entire order ships absolutely free. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use that promo code to get deep discounts on all MyPillow products. And for a limited time, your order ships absolutely free. Back. And we're back. Welcome back. This is Rudy Giuliani with America's Mayor Live. So... I told you what we would talk about is Biden going down and Trump going up. So how, how is Biden going down? Biden is going down because every day his favorability rating uh, goes down. It's now uh, very, very uh, solidly below 40 percent. Somewhere around 70 percent of the American people, including Democrats, don't want him to run. Now, that doesn't mean that the Democrats won't vote for him, but they don't want him to run. So that, um, where does that have a big impact? That has a big impact on enthusiasm. In other words, they hate Trump, but they don't want Biden either, and they just may not show up to vote. The enthusiasm level between the two is incredibly different. So, uh, I mean, Trump has the people that love him. Trump has the people who hate him. Biden has the people really who don't love him. They, they're gonna vote for him because they hate Trump. I'm not sure Biden has, except maybe for Jill and all the people that do bribes with him, uh, people that are actually voting for him. I think they have people who are voting against Trump. Uh, that isn't a particularly positive drive to bring out a vote, which is why they cheat, because they don't have a natural enthusiasm level that brings out a heavy vote. For example, in the last election, if you take away all the paper ballots, Trump beat the hell out of them. Like in 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 um, in uh, Pennsylvania, probably beat him by three four hundred thousand votes on election day. When we know who voted, and we know they were mostly real people. Oh, that also counts the cheating they do with dead people on election day. So we have to grant them that. Uh, but. Biden's Biden's uh, un unfavorability keeps going up. And the most important thing to watch, his enthusiasm keeps going down. So they're going to cheat. Probably not anywhere near what they did last time. But the real question is Trump has to build a margin in to win. He says by a landslide. I don't think he has to win by a landslide, but he's got to win by the kind of numbers that he has right now. So, um, what are those numbers right now? Right now, he's about 5% ahead in the national polls. That's about 20 different polls uh, over the last month. Uh, probably the worst to be 2% ahead, the best to be 11. And they average out at 5%. They don't really count that much because you don't decide it based on a national poll, right? You decide it on state by state, which means he's got a bigger lead than that. If he if he loses the popular vote to Joe Biden by two or 3%, he'll win the election because uh, Biden's vote is driven by two big, you could consider them almost false numbers, right? New York, California. So if he wins California, uh, he, he racks up, you know, a two million vote margin. If uh, Trump wins Mississippi, he racks up a 200,000 vote margin. Um, so since Trump wins smaller states and has to put together a lot of different states with smaller electoral votes, he, he, he doesn't draw as many 
popular votes. So if he's ahead in popular votes, it's really desperate for um, for, uh, for for Biden. So let's get down to the states. If everybody wins and loses the states they won and lost last time, and Trump picks up Georgia and Arizona, where he is leading by more than 5% right now. He will have 262 electoral votes. He needs eight more. He's got three ways to get them right now in states that he's ahead. Uh, and he needs one of them, not all of them. Uh, Michigan, which uh, Ted's going to win for him. He told me that, so we don't, we don't. We have no problem with Michigan. And uh, if he wins Michigan and nothing else, and the two I told you, he becomes president. I think he has 272 electoral votes at that point. Uh, the second one, which I'm very positive about, is uh, Wisconsin. If he wins Wisconsin, uh, these are uh, that's a state he lost by 10,000 votes last time. Ha uh ha! -huh. Uh -huh. Please, I have to laugh. We'll do the Wisconsin story some other time. But if he wins Wisconsin, where he's got a six-point lead, uh, he then wins. And if he wins Pennsylvania, where he's going to win, but he's going to have to overcome the, the best cheating machine in the world, the Democrat Party of Philadelphia. It's a professional team, not, um, not amateur. Uh, they cheat even when they don't have to to practice. Um, I, I don't think they'll bring Joe Frazier out again, but Joe Frazier has voted twice since he died. He didn't vote in 2020. And uh, since I've been talking about him, they've kind of left him at peace in the grave. But uh, their ability to cheat is unmatched by any state in the country. Now, it ha and happens to be probably a state where um, he'd do better. I mean, it's a state where if you left it alone, he'd probably win it by more than Georgia or Michigan or um, Wisconsin because it's a very, it's a, it's a state that lines up really well for him. It's a, a, a state that is not uh, insane on abortion. Uh, one of their Democratic senators is pro-life. It's a state that is very strongly supportive of his trade policy because it's made up of people who were fired from steel mills and coal mines or the second generation uh, who remember that their father used to have a nice job and it went to China. Who's talking about that and who is it? Um, and, and, and finally, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a state that uh, has a very, very uh, strong view about, about law and order. And with the exception, and, and is going through tremendous crime problems. Philadelphia, in two of the last four years, set a record for homicide. By a record for homicide, I mean more people were killed in 2022 in Philadelphia than ever before in its history. They have a district attorney who's one of the worst of the Soros district attorneys. Police almost, uh, police don't do business with him. He turns down over 50% of his cases and he wins about 30%. Now, do, do you know what the uh, percentage of uh, victory for United States attorney's office is? Not just New York, which is a great one. I ran it. It's 90%. He wins 30% of his cases. That means 70% of the people that were guilty are probably walking around the streets. And of course, he doesn't set bail for them. And that's why they have a record for murder. And the city is in terrible, terrible condition. So that's going to affect the suburbs, which can vote Republican. The middle of the state is very solidly Republican. It's a, um, that's the most NRA members in the country. So if we can, if we can put the pressure on there and keep it close, uh, we can definitely, we can definitely win. Now, the other thing that hel helps him is they don't know how to run against him. Uh, remember Ron DeSantis saying, almost um, regretting that, 
uh, not just because he thinks it's unfair, but from his own point of view that that uh, Trump was indicted. I think if you ask Ron DeSantis, I, I don't think this is correct, but I think if you ask him, he would say, if they didn't indict him, I'd have won. You think so? No, I don't think so. I'm telling you, Ron DeSantis would say that. And uh, and it's a good. I, not, I think if, if they didn't indict him, it would have been closer. Uh, we, we, we might be still uh, yeah. uh, ba- battling it out. Nikki never would have became a thing. No, Nikki would be gone. It would have been uh, DeSantis and, um, yeah, probably DeSantis would have been the, would, would have had a little more life than he had. Because remember, Trump pulled away with the first indictment. And then the second, he pulled away some more. And by the third and fourth, they were almost getting them elected by uh, acclamation. How many ra- how many rallies did you do for DeSantis leading up to his 2018? Uh... Don't be mean. We're trying to get his support. <laughs> he's he's on board. I know, I know, yeah. but we don't. We want, well, we're not. We, we're him, we want him to be enthusiastically on board. Of course. Well, I'm just pointing out that you helped him in 2018. I did. And I so did the president. I, I did. But the idea is that he's not a great candidate. <laughs> And he wasn't a great candidate, and maybe he'll learn how to be a great candidate. It's the first time that he ran. But the uh, the, the 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 real point is that um, every time they attack him, he picks up more votes. So now, why is that? Because the people who hate him are there. They're not going to change, and I don't think you're going to add too many more to what you have. People that love him just don't listen they don't care so then you have all these people in the middle uh they have a president who they know uh without any doubt because you can't lie to them they can see it is demented there's no way he should be in the white house let, let's uh, i i think most americans have common sense if you have common sense you know the president of the united states has lost uh, somewhere like three quarters of his brain cells uh you know that he's a 30-year crook and you know that that money was not for Hunter Biden unless you're a fool. Or you think China's a fool. Like they're going to pay a, a drug addict for nothing just to give him money. When in fact, there's a good reason to pay the drug addict. It's to bribe his father. Um, so you know that. So you're, you're, you're going back and forth with uh, Trump, who you think maybe doesn't talk right or say things right or is, is insensitive or... But if you think about it, four years ago, things were a lot better. The big thing is Trump turned over a peaceful world to Biden. What's Biden going to turn over to Trump? Turn over a, 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 a world that some people think could go into a world war. Uh, I'm, 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 not, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you that it will. I'm not telling you that I believe that it will. But I am telling you, you better worry about it, because if you don't worry about it, it may turn into a world war. Um, he turned over a, a, a country with an economy that was the best that it's been in 50 years. Biden likes to tell you that the economy is wonderful. I just keep checking inflation. You know what it is today, right now? It's up 29% from the day that Trump left office. You pay 29% more for groceries calculated nationally some places a lot more than that that's a one-third increase in a thing you have to do buy food that's ridiculous uh, most people have not had a raise because their raise is less than the rate of inflation now the rate of inflation has come down it's still too high at three plus percent but the only reason he says it's come down is it's come down from the 9% high that he created. It used to be below, used to be below uh, uh, 3% under Trump. In fact, it's gone up since Trump left by 60%. So those are all things that will help Trump. But their continued attack on him helps him. For example, Keith Olbermann. Now, do we have that? Is there, there, those were done on Twitter. Uh, yeah, were they yeah. done on Twitter on, on X, right? So, so Keith Olbermann, who is, who really belongs somewhere other than te- on television, like someplace where he can get help. Um, wow. uh, he, he, 
tweeted the following. And I'd like you to think if, I don't know, who should we pick? Um, Hannity or someone? Sure. Tweeted this about Biden. Yeah. Uh, he said, um, Let me download this. Trump says he's been treated worse than Abraham Lincoln, who was assassinated. Oberman then said, there's always the hope. That's about as crazy you get, right? Trump says he has been treated worse than Abraham Lincoln, who was assassinated. There's always the hope. And we're going to put that up in a second here. Openly wishing death upon the former president, the leading candidate of the Republican Party, and somebody that right now, a majority of the American people want as president. But of course, Keith Olbermann is smarter than all of them. And he sees some terrible evil in this man. Um, now, I don't, um, I don't think this... I don't think uh, Keith Olbermann uh, impresses or convinces anyone. I think most people look at him, look at his eyes, and they say, please get help. Uh, even when he was a sports reporter, he didn't know what the hell he was doing. Um, so we have, we but this helps Trump. You see, people hear this. Now, people who hate Trump, I don't know, maybe the people who agree with it, hopefully not too many. And the people who hate Trump just, rack it up and the people who love trump hate Obama. but think of the people in the middle and it kind of makes the case that there is the hatred out there for him that's sick right that the people on the other side of him are sick people uh they're saying that he wants um they're saying he wants to do away with democracy right but they're the ones trying to keep him off the ballot so who's trying to do away with democracy what is democracy it's having a choice of at least two people for an office. Biden uh, would prefer it if there were only one choice. That's not democratic. That's um, communist, Nazi, fascist. It's not democratic. So I, I think I think the game of changing the meaning of words and the viciousness of their attack is helping Trump. And I think that's why his numbers are going up. So the, the more they do it, uh, the only thing I worry about, and I really do worry about it, they've tried everything to stop him from being president. And I probably know that as well, or better than most people, because I defended him for three and a half years against the, the first and maybe the most ridiculous one, Russian collusion. But in order to do Russian collusion, they committed numerous crimes for which they've been able to get away because we don't have a fair justice system. First of all, Hillary paid a million one to create the story. It has no basis in anything other than her, her paying uh, the Oppo research people a million one so that uh, uh, they, they, they could go create uh, the dossier which was completely false, completely phony. It was created actually in Ukraine, not Russia. It's created by a man who hasn't been in Russia for 17 years. It has things in it that are patently absurd, like Trump urinated on uh, the bed Obama slept in when Obama was in uh, Russia. And I'm not even sure Obama had been to Russia when Trump was there, but I'm just kind of crazy, crazy that he's been an agent of the Communist Party for 20 years and has really insane stuff in it. Well, she paid for that. And that was going to be her ticket to winning. That was all going to come out. The press was going to, you know, blow it up. But uh, we started debunking it before they were able to get it out. And the FBI went and investigated it and couldn't prove it. So then they tried to use it to impeach him. So think about this. They paid, and they paid a lot more than a million dollars, millions of dollars, to circulate a false story that would get him impeached, which is like framing someone for a crime. Can you do anything much worse than that? Trying to convict an innocent person of something he didn't do and pay money to get it done and lie over and over again and have the FBI lie and have the FBI 
threaten people and have the FBI search hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people for no reason to intimidate them? Can you do much worse than that? Uh, no, but they did. Then they did the phony uh, story about um, his conversation with the, with the uh, uh, president of Ukraine, in which he did nothing more than ask the president of the Ukraine to look into the allegations that were true. But we didn't know they were true because they were covering up the hard drive. So the Attorney General of the United States, Bill Barr, sat there while false evidence was being offered against his president. I get kind of angry because I was his friend and he sat there and listened to Joe Biden say that I was a Russian pawn when he knew I wasn't because he had the hard drive that proved it. All he had to do is say, uh, let me put this out because it's my duty to, to, to clear this up for the American people since they're making a very important choice about president. Someday we'll figure out why you didn't do that. Uh, I, uh, there's a reason. I, I'm not suggesting I know it yet, but I'm convinced that there is. So we could go on and on with all of the crimes they've committed to try to stop him, all the crazy things they've come up with. So my friend and uh, former, former partner and Bernie Carrick, who knows law enforcement as well or better than anyone, is very worried that they're going to kill him. He's very worried that if they that they are capable of it. Now I don't know that they're capable of it or not. Uh, I didn't think they were capable of this. I mean, if you if you ask me, would they frame an innocent person? Would they pay enormous amounts of money to frame an innocent person? Could could Biden get away with getting uh, twenty thirty million dollars from Red China? Or even, even if you want to hang on to the idiotic uh, uh, thought that Biden didn't get the money, should the family of the president get $21 million from Red China? Isn't that enough to uh, uh, su uh, suggest that he's compromised? I mean, I, so if, if you've lived through the Cold War, why don't you think back, suppose... It came out that Eisenhower's brother got $21 million from the Soviets. Or Kennedy's brother. Or Reagan's. I think we would have hung him. We weren't like that then. You, know, you did business with our enemies in a way like that. Now remember, that not only did he take the money, how many lies have they told about it? A hundred. Do you know, do you know when, when, uh, idiot girl there, uh, asked those questions about, a, about a crime, you know, how easy it would be to convict Biden. There's something in the law known as a false exculpatory statement. And if you, if you are, um, if I can show that you lied about something having to do with the crime, for example, I never talked to my son or had any knowledge of his business dealings. Now there's a tape which we've played for you numerous times on this show, of Joe calling his uh, son and indicating his knowledge of the business dealings. There were also 10 witnesses and 30 emails, and it, it, it would be impossible, it'd be impossible not to prove. It. And I think you, I think the minute it came out of his mouth, everybody knew he was lying because it's so absurd. I don't know anything about my son's dealings. He formed the China, the decrepit uh, drug addict, 10 days later gets a billion dollars from the Bank of China to invest in a, a fund that's made up of him, a drug addict, uh, John Kerry's stepson, so you can buy the vice president and, and the secretary of state at the same time, uh, the Bank of China, so they were partners with Red... The Bank of China is the Chinese government, please understand that. It's not like a bank in the United States. It's a... It's a... Um, it's a, owned by the government of China. It's owned by the Communist Party. Now, you ne you never are told who the fourth partner is, are you? Why do you bulge his nephew? Now, how, how does that happen if it isn't, it isn't fixed? If it isn't corrupt, well, it is.
And as this keeps coming out, people like Olbermann do this. It just generates uh, more and more people who say, oh, well, maybe I don't like the way he talks, but I sure had, should have had a safer and better life when he was, when he was president. So, Joe, uh, keep it uh, keep it up. Well, Ted, do you want to you want to before I take a break? Did you want to ask something? Just real quick, Mayor, and we have that voicemail between Joe and his son Hunter. But it's amazing, right? The Western media, uh, the EU, a lot of these a lot of these folks are calling out Putin, probably rightfully so, for an unfair election recently. Yet they remain silent when the Biden regime in this country are trying to jail bankrupt and do anything they can to eliminate their top political opponent. So I find that quite interesting. Uh, per perfectly consistent with the fact that the large uh, majority of, of, of the, of the media is part of it. That's right. And uh, benefit from it. I mean, uh, who, who knows how much money uh, uh, the times is making with China? Well, maybe some of our audience can decipher this uh, voicemail between Joe and his son, Hunter. But. Hey, pal, it's Dad. It's 8.15 um, on uh, Wednesday night. If you get a chance, give me a call. Nothing, nothing urgent. just want to talk to you. I thought the article, at least it's been on online, it's going to be printed tomorrow in the Times. It's good. I think it's clear. And uh, anyway, um, if you get a chance, give me a call. I love you. Now, what you should know is that the article he's referring to is about, um, I'm not good on words and articles. It's like a three page, if, 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 if it were typed, it would be like a 10 page uh, article. And it is a very, very uh, detailed description of the business that China was doing with the Biden family and the business they wanted to do. So when he says that he read the article, it completely, negates in his own words the lie he's been telling for 20 years that he doesn't know anything about his son's foreign dealings and then of course he sounds an awful lot like a gangster when he says you're in, you're in the clear hey, i've heard that one i mean i you, you can't imagine how many tapes i've listened to in my life hey you're in the clear rocco <laughs> um i gotta tell you another thing Half the mafia guys actually were more decent than he is they would never have taken their drug addict son who was prone to drug drug uh, what, what what would you what would you call that had a uh, had a addictive personality when he was like 16 17. they wouldn't have taken that delicate more delicate son and put him in this kind of business now, i just told you who he's doing business with right uh, the, 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 i don't think they get across to the american people the level of criminal he was dealing with. Uh, the, the, the guy in Ukraine, Zloshevsky, who's on tape saying he gave them a $10 million bribe. He's on tape saying that. Uh, they put the guy who got the tape in jail. <laughs> not Biden. <laughs> the guy who got the tape is in jail, not Biden. But in any event, that guy is a member of uh, organized crime. He was a uh, member of the Russian-oriented Ukrainian government, a friend of Putin's. So all this stuff that that Trump is close to Putin and Trump never got money from them. This guy is a is allied with Putin, and he's a murderer. Probably can't prove the murder, but he was in he was in government. While he was in government, he stole all of the oil and gas properties, put them in his co company. His partner ran the company. He came out of the company and 10 weeks later, his partner took his car and ran it into a tree and died. What do you think as a former prosecutor, I think happened since that meant he got hundred percent of the business. The business is worth $40 million. You think there's anybody in Ukraine that doesn't know what happened? You think there's any intelligent person in the United States that couldn't figure out what happened? Uh, the guy is an organized criminal. He's a violent criminal. He's stolen $40 million from the Ukrainian people. 
Uh, he double crosses the U U Ukrainian people by working with uh, 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 Russia. Uh, and uh, he employed Hunter Biden for six years and paid him minimum seven or eight million dollars. OK, so that's one of them. Uh, another one of his partners is sitting at the bottom of the Yangtze River right now. Uh, uh, Mr. Z. Mr. Z was one of the richest men in China. What he, what he did was he ran a company that uh, excelled in gathering intelligence in the United States and flipping Americans to get them to cooperate against America. Uh, Hunter describes it best to a prostitute with a tape in which he says, you know, my partner is the spy chief of China. Like, my partner is the spy chief of China prostitute. I don't know why he did it. I don't know why he does most of the things that he did, that he does. By the way, so if you don't want to, if you don't want to believe him that he was bragging to the prostitute, uh, there's a contract between him in writing. He was the partner of the spy chief of China who was paying the Biden family. Uh, so all of this is now starting to come together, one piece here, one piece there. And these polls are getting out, out of out of control. I even think um, I even think it helps him, but boy, he doesn't want it. I don't want it. And if I'm angry about a lot of things today, the one that I'm angriest about is that my friend Peter Navarro is in jail. Damn you. Man. I mean, what is that? What, what are you putting the guy in jail for? What the hell is that all about? He he didn't uh, he didn't show up for a subpoena of Congress because he was asserting executive privilege. And you put him in in, in irons, you put, you put his leg. I mean, I, I don't know, how old is Peter? 72? 72 years old. He's a man who's never been in trouble in his entire life. He served the government brilliantly. 74 years old. And you're going to put him in jail for four months. For no reason other than your vindictiveness. I mean, if, if, if the U.S. attorney in the District of Columbia didn't have a brain, you would have had uh, the gold star father who interrupted your ridiculous speech the other night. You'd had him in jail. Uh, see, I would have had no problem at your speech getting in trouble because I would have fallen asleep. I can't watch senile old men give speeches. It's very hard. It's very hard to follow them. Um, <laughs> oh, no, more like this. More like this. <laughs> Well, that that <laughs> that state of the union was something else. But we have some uh, a few. Do you want to hear from Peter outside the? Yeah, I'd like to hear an courthouse. Here's I'd Peter like to Navarro. hear an intelligent elderly man. Uh, Navarro's going to prison today. Um, you guys will uh, certainly focus on that little story. But what what I suggest to you as as journalists is that there's two really bigger stories that you might want to report on and even uh, do some research on uh, because these are these are big issues. This is not about me. Uh, the, one of the big stories is about what is really um, an unprecedented assault on the constitutional separation of powers and the um, doctrine of executive privilege as a, as, a, as a critical tool dating back to George Washington of effective presidential decision making. And when I walk in that prison today, the justice system such as it is will have done a crippling blow to the constitutional separation of powers and executive privilege. The second and related story has to do with the emergence of lawfare and the partisan weaponization of our justice system. That's prison. That's where they take your freedom. But as hard as it will be on me and as hard as it will be on anybody who is in there, it's harder on their families. And this is who those. That's a good man, a loyal American 
I work with him very, very closely uh, on the election. He didn't know anything wrong. Uh, my son worked in in the Trump administration, you know, for most of the four, almost all four years as it, and he he got promoted along the way. He started out, you know, near the bottom. Loved Peter. I mean, there are people in the White House, even in the Trump White House, who are pricks. <laughs> you just got to understand it. People in politics are awful. Uh, there were some people that were terrible, but he was like a guy who was very very decent to the young people, uh, patient, taught them spent time lecturing lecturing them on uh he he is an e expert economist uh a great economist he, he's not a cr i know criminals believe me he is not a criminal the guy that put him there is a criminal and he's sitting in the white house and this guy is sitting in jail this guy'd be more capable of sitting in the white house than the 35 year criminal that's there terrible so let's take a, a a short break so that i can uh come back and um take my fix okay 12 13th time to keep and uh, and i was going supposed to announce that there's another billion dollar loan guarantee and i had gotten a commitment from poroshenko and from uh Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor and they didn't so they said they had they walked out the press conference and said, no, i said i'm not going to we're not going to give you the billion dollars they said, you have no authority. You're not the president. The president said, I said, call him. <laughs> I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Well, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. And they put in place someone who was solid at the time. Well, there's still, they, so they made some genuine, s substantial changes institutionally and with people. But in one of the three institutions, there's now some backsliding. There and the, yes, and they had made a commitment that they wouldn't do that. And so when we left, the first thing I spent uh, um, a lot of time, as did Mike, because this was his territory as well, and uh, people like Charlie Cupchin and Victoria. And anyway, there, there were a lot of good people we had working on this. We spent a lot of time with Vice President Pence. You know I'm succeeding because I'm having my fruits that and my vegetables. Make sure you visit balanceofnature.com. Use that promo code Rudy R U D Y, and you get Mayor thirty five percent off. Those that's an unheard of discount for almost anything. So not only are you doing yourself a favor, your mind, your body, maybe somebody you love, but by using that promo code, you're supporting everything the mayor is doing each and every night here on America's Mayor Live. So why don't we get to some questions? Was that your wake up call? <laughs> that's why that's why I walked. So we're now officially entering soccer time. Uh, but of course, Mayor, there's a number of other stories. You know, we always throughout the day, we end up having the, the, illegal, so much the illegal migrant, just, just so, um, you know, I'm gonna bring you every night the illegal migrant crimes that they're hiding for several reasons. First of all, to show you that we're living through an illegal migrant crime wave, not just the other crime wave that we have, but we're, we're, we're living through a crime wave created by, completely created by Joe Biden. These people would not be here, but for Joe Biden. Remember, Trump left, 400,000 people came in illegally. We vetted them, we put them in jail. Under Joe Biden, last year, 3.2 million people came in illegally. That's a different world. 400,000, 3.2 million is a state. Uh, it's, it's not easy to keep track of 400,000, but it's a hell of a lot easier to keep track of 400,000 than it is 3.2 million. So let's, let's be honest with each other. We don't know who these people are. When uh, Trump says, or uh, the idiot mayor that we have, says that you know they're people that just want to work and they're like the people that came in for the statue of liberty or i mean the other day biden apologized for calling the rapist murderer illegal and he said these are the people that built america rapists and murderers built america 
much. I don't think so, Joe. I don't think so. And, uh, and hopefully these people are not going to build a new America. Otherwise, we're going to become like their countries. We're going to become uh, sa savages. Now, if you uh, every day uh, Trump gets proven right, that the first thing they went after him on, he was right and they were they were wrong when he called the illegal migrants coming in, that some of them were animals. He didn't say they all were. He said some were. The some he re was referring to was the MS-13. And the reason he was was because within a short period before he did that, there was a, a, a fairly notorious crime in New York where the bodies of several girls were found on a beach in Islip, New York, with their heads cut off with a message from MS-13 saying, we run things now. Now, this, this is not unusual. This MS-13 had been doing this, oh gosh, for about six or seven years before that in different cities in America. MS-13 MS is a very, very vicious, very well-organized, like all of them, the gang that started in the prisons. Uh, so, Here's the crime of uh, here's the crime that was revealed today. Uh, a man named Alfredo Morocco, Morocho, Morocho, 37 years old, um, was caught uh, a couple of days ago sex trafficking a 17 year old migrant girl that he recruited from a from one of Adams Queens uh, shelters. Now we have been telling you that sex trafficking, child trafficking. Human trafficking is a bigger industry for them than drugs. Uh, not that drugs isn't unbelievably big industry and they're not making billions from it, but they're making more from children. This is just one example. Uh, so he, he was um, picking her up at the shelter and taking her to a hotel. In this particular case, the New York Flushing Hotel the Renaissance New York Flushing Hotel. And, um, and then, he, then he, was, he negotiated with a John at the hotel. Thank God the John was a police officer, undercover. Tape recorded the bum, the animal. Uh, now, here's the problem. This guy's done it before, and he's, he's a fugitive. Th this guy did the, the same thing. They, they, <laughs> it's an old expression. He's on the lam for allegedly fondling a nine-year-old girl. Uh, so this is an illegal immigrant. The young girl that he's taking advantage of is an illegal immigrant. I don't know about the nine-year-old girl. And finally, of course, we have the New York touch to it. He's back out on the street right now. So, you know, um, until they catch him again, he'll probably pimp 20, 30 of these girls. Not, not a... It, it, they made a minimum, minimal interruption in his business. This is why you, I, I don't know how you justify voting for Democrats and claim that you love children. You know what they're doing to children? There are 85,000 uh, unaccounted for children that have come in just in the last year. We don't know where they are. We don't know where the children are in the United States. We are certain that the vast majority of them are being used for ho horrible things. And we've become the worst offender of child trafficking in the world now. Your country, my country, our country, because of Biden. See, so you open the door and you say, I'm not gonna check. Uh, uh, criminal groups are smart. And that's why they make a lot of money. And they say, okay, you're not gonna check. Well, we, we, we're going to send in every, anybody and everybody that we can. And this is one of them. So we'll keep letting you know. We'll keep letting you know about this. And uh, let's not have them hide the immigrant crimes. So we'll take a short break. And uh, we will be right back. And uh, we'll have a series of questions because we have a wonderful audience. Yay! Ice is something that you can plug into your television 
And now you can use your television as a social television type experience. So in the Portal universe, you can watch your favorite content creators videos, live streams, music. We also have TV subscriptions as well. TV so subscriptions, you uh, can also, regular channels, all the sports. Right, you can actually cut your cable from your cable subscription and get QUX TV on our QUX TV boxes and you can pay half the price that you're currently paying for your cable television subscription and you can get all the best premium TV channels and more. I mean, it's really, there's so much on there, Rudy. I mean, you've seen it. It's no, 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 I've seen it and I, I use it. And it, 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 it's, I mean, it's, it's just exactly the same, except for half the price. Plus, nobody is finding out what I'm watching. And that's not being reported to anybody. Right, so you have absolute privacy using this device, which you don't have on other devices out there currently on the market. This is absolutely great. QUX.TV is how you can find out about it. QUX.TV. Use promo code RUDY to receive $30 off. Let's get it as close to you as we can. Okay, go ahead. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Tell us who you are. Catherine Larson. And where are you from? Uh, California, Sacramento, Reagan country. That's absolutely right. Next, next to New Yorker who voted for you also. <laughs> and helped raise money for you in yeah, California. 2008. That's about 2008. Yes, I was actually part of a fundraiser for you in San Francisco. Oh, my. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I remember do, doing a fundraiser in San Francisco. Yeah, several, yeah. Like, it's unbelievable that you, a Republican actually raised money in San Francisco. Well, I, It was a lot better then than now, huh? Yeah, San Francisco is suffering. It's really sad, actually. It, it breaks my heart because it's more on the mayoral side and and kind of that whole trying to be the sanctuary city. And, and Gavin Newsom is being really awful about it. And, and actually, I'm personally friends with him. So it's even worse. He was the mayor about, about 10 years ago. Even longer. Yeah. Longer than that? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, they've also had it. They also had the Soros DA they threw out. Do they still have a DA like that? No, it's, it's uh, you know, that's another issue in itself, but I think there's a DA that is running that could actually be more um, supportive of trying to bring, you know, control the crime. I will say that in San Francisco, around Union Square, which was really, and Mark Benioff, when Mark Benioff did Dreamforce, mm -hmm. he was really adamant about coming down and saying, look, you know, there are people that don't want to come to this, and we're raising millions and millions of dollars for the city that... They actually, Gavin Newsom stepped up and said, oh, we're going to clean it up. Well, he cleaned it up for two weeks to be kind of the show of it all, but not necessarily implemented these. Oh, you mean when 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 uh, Xi Jinping came? Yeah. yeah. Well, that, and then after that uh, with Dreamforce, which you know what got me Salesforce. really, really angry beyond containment. That in an American city, we had a celebration for the head of the Communist Party of China. Who and that communist and they all the Chinese people were cheering and cheering and cheering with big smiles on their faces. There's uh, nobody alive today that's killed more Chinese people than the man they were cheering. Oh, it's awful. Well, in Sac San Francisco and genocide, genocide, genocide's a joke compared to what China has killed under the communists. Eighty million of their own people. Eighty million of their own people. Now a lot of it goes back. But he's he's probably pushing 10 million. And here they are cheering for him and waving Chinese flags like a bunch of automatons under the Democratic Party. It's awful. It's awful. It would be like cheering for Hitler. Well, over and beyond that, I mean, when, when she was in town and Biden's meeting with them and they're talking about trying to, to stop the fentanyl um, issue and and the whole drug issue. It's, it was awful because this is this is actually what's corrupting our society now, especially in, in California, and and not addressing that, not as trying to stop it from coming into Ch you know from China into the United States, and that's that's really what's really hurting San Francisco right now is the homeless being you know on drugs and not having the support to get off of it, and that's really I think that that's the hard thing because I you know we try and help the homeless get off of it. Well, tell me, what would you like to ask? Is there anything you want to ask me? Then we'll see if we can get some others to get involved. 
So my question to you is, is that I'm really offended by um, John Oliver trying to bribe Clarence Thomas, Justice Con Thomas. I just think that that's offensive. Try and say if you have 24 hours or whatever it is to respond to stepping down as Supreme Court Justice, having grown up with Justice Kennedy and the family and everyone else, like, and um, Warren, you know, and it's just, it just, I find that offensive. I'd love to know your opinion. Well, you're absolutely right. It's uh, completely offensive. It's uh, uh, it's something that, my goodness, if a Republican did it, um, the, the world would the world that world the world would end uh, in terms of interference with the integrity of the court. Um, but they want to do anything they can to destroy the court because it doesn't go their way all the time now. It isn't that the court goes against them all the time, but it doesn't go their way all the time. So they want to destroy it. It's part of, of how they want to, in essence, destroy America. The Supreme Court is a, is a critical part of America. It's been a nine judge court for an awful long time. To make it a 15 or 20 judge court will politicize it completely. And we'll have we'll have a court like they have in um, I mean, what good is the court? What's good is the court? What's what, what good is the court in, in, in Russia? Putin will tell you uh, what to do, right? The court's not going to tell you don't kill Navalny. He'll tell you not to kill Navalny, but he'll do it anyway. That's where we're going. I mean, uh, I watched the ju the judges on the D uh, D.C. District Court put all those January 6 people in jail for extraordinary amounts of time. And the chief judge was unhappy and called them all together and told the judges they weren't giving enough time. Now, I, I've been in the criminal justice system for 50 years. I never remember a judge ever telling other judges you, you're not mean enough well and then recently, I mean, is, you got to be ooh, to do that well and then recently sotomayor and and two of the more conservative judges were were um aligned in some of their decision making that mm -hmm. would just happen i think yesterday or the day before so i just think that people are not respecting our system and, and the our supreme court justices and they are actually following the constitution we've uh, put in people from that follow the constitution and then it's not about interpretation it's actually about following the law and that's why a lot of us americans are for other republicans who actually want to follow the law like yourself and other people so um oh I well i would i would say you picked the wrong justice there are a couple of those justices i won't mention which ones i worry about being affected by things like this uh for example, I thought they deliberately stayed out of the 2020 election so they didn't get their skirts dirty when they should have intervened, particularly when 17 states sued Pennsylvania. Uh, you can't just avoid a case like that. Uh, but so some of them can be intimidated. Well, and you can't even like Not Thomas. Well, and also uh, Thomas would just laugh at them. Well, of course, and to, to be bought. I mean, yes, he's he does complain about the fact he can't live on his salary. That's okay because we're all, you know, even people that are in public service, that is an issue. But the same time is is that they're trying to throw Trump off the election ballot, and and even Sotomayor coming on and saying, "No, you can't. That's unconstitutional." It's, that, it's, it's absolutely what they're trying to do. That, and, to, and to try to claim that Trump is going to is going to end democracy when they're doing it. They're ending democracy. That that is so. Here here's an interesting thing you might not know, but uh, we decided, of course, to we're going to buy. Biden decided we're going to buy oil from Venezuela when we stop being energy independent. Venezuela is one of the few communist countries, a dictatorship mm -hmm. uh, run by uh, now uh, um, uh, M uh, Maduro before before that Chavez, aligned with China. Uh, so in order to lift the sanctions, they, they weren't going to sell us oil unless we lifted the sanctions. But we required, in order to lift the sanctions, that they have free and fair elections. Sounds good so far, right? And Biden, he shook hands on free and fair elections. Within three weeks, Maduro threw his, his opponent off the ballot. Sound familiar? Yeah. 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 Well, well, we want to... So Maduro's running in a free and fair election, except there's nobody running against him. <laughs> it's free. You don't have to pay for it. Same with Putin winning again. It's fair. His name, his name is clear as hell on the ballot. <laughs> you don't have to vote, yeah. or you can vote for him. That's, that's fair, right? And meanwhile, we talk. If you're a, 
And that's that's, that's what this is what they're trying to accomplish. This, and this is essentially what the Colorado Supreme Court tried to accomplish four to three. There were four justices of the Supreme Court that actually thought that that was required by the Constitution to do that. What should what Constitution should would could, require that? But the Constitution of a dictatorial government. Wasting taxpayers' dollars. These people, they go to support tax. Test such a thing that's so ludicrous. It's just obviously against the law. Yeah, the Constitution. It is ridiculous. Probably is costing the Trump campaign. Not that this is really matters. The RNC or the yeah. RNC, probably four or five million dollars just to fight that. Everyone, they, because it's a very complicated case, and it requires you can't um, you can't just assume they're going to decide it the right way nowadays. I mean, thirty years ago, the case had been just thrown out. It had been laughed out of court. It had been thrown out. And I clerk for a federal judge who was the chief judge in the Southern District of New York who had a great sense of humor. And when lawyers did things like that, he would say to them, um, like if uh, K- Kenji Jackson said that stupid thing about the First Amendment, he would say to her, uh, Ms. Jackson, where'd you go to law school? <laughs> She'd say, Harvard, why don't you get your money back? <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to thank <laughs> Catherine. Catherine, by the way, a superstar fundraiser supporting strong America First candidates across this country, uh, of course, including a former presidential candidate and mayor of New York City uh, in 2008. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you, Catherine. And we're going to move right up to our next guest. We're going to keep the shot. We're going to bring up our friend. Thank you, Catherine. Stacy Engman. And Stacy is going to, we're Come. changing this up a little bit. Uh, from well, it still involves politics, but Stacy is a world-renowned artist. Mayor, I haven't uh, I haven't hey. briefed you on this, uh, <laughs> Stacy. We only have a couple minutes, so unfortunately, we we can't get too much into it. But w- w- why don't you take from here and let the mayor know uh, what you've done and get his um, opinion on the matter? This involves art and space. Art and what? Space, outer space. Uh, oh, outer space. Outer space. <laughs> Keeping it, uh, keeping the conversation elevated here. Um, first of all, I'd like to say, as a longtime New Yorker, you're always my favorite hero. I love you so much. For Thank you. Our 9-11 days and forever. So You're very kind. Thank you. Very, very delighted to be here with you today. Um, as Teddy just mentioned, we set a world record, I, at least 50 years since we landed on the moon as Americans. And we, I was the first, um, I was very happy to be amongst the first Two weeks ago mm-hmm. to land on the moon, and I was just you were, what, 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 what? well, uh, my artwork landed on the moon, oh, along oh, with uh, oh. 222 other artists. I was wondering if you got maybe got the tan, <laughs> maybe you get a great tan on the moon. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> that was from Paul Beach, not the sun's glare. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so basically I was just curious, you know, um, there were 20, there were 222 of us and also other artists like Jeff Coons and, and what have you. Um, I was on the blockchain because the biggest cons, um, constraints in space so far have been size. Mm-hmm. So they were able to miniaturize our art, but then put it on the blockchain. So I was just very curious what your... I guess aspirations were, or if you have any about space or the blockchain or what your position is on that. I was, I was very, very happy that uh, uh, Trump reopened uh, our our agency that uh, explores our being able to expand in space. Oh, wonderful! Uh, and I don't know that Biden has done anything with it in four in in three years, but I'm hopeful that if Trump uh, becomes president again, he'll he'll really expand that. And we got to be very thankful to the private people uh, like uh, Elon Musk um, uh, and several others who are putting in fortunes to keep us viable in space. Right. Because uh, the last thing in the world we want is a, a you know, a, 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 a military contest about who, who dominates space. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We should. (laughs) Well, so we can make sure it's done fairly and it's done honestly and it's not being used to um, to take, you know, to to uh, to dominate the earth. Right. Um, So what do you think of the eclipse coming up? It's April 8th, right? That's right. That's a great question. You know, I keep uh, uh, I'm terrible. I I keep sunglasses. You know, they they have like special eclipse. sunglasses. Yeah, we ordered those already. (laughs) 
But now I'm thinking about I'm thinking yeah, things. We got to get some of those, man. But you know, uh, you know what has me hung up right now? You know how crazy I am when I order stuff on Amazon, right? Yeah. Uh, I want to get the right lens for for oh, I, I have figured out the right lens for um, for the smartphone for in our, our case, the iPhone, in your case, Android. Galaxy, right? Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to get the right one for a super duper. Oh, so for the eclipse, our, our super duper camera Polar eclipse, this is happening April 8th. A great little camera. We're planning to find a we're going to be in that path. We're yeah, thinking probably, New York or New, New Hampshire. Hampshire, New Hampshire or Plattsburgh, New York. Oh, that's fabulous. And that's and, right along the path. But we want to be there and we want to broadcast from there. But I think we're going to have to get some lenses to put on um, put on here uh, oh. for, for for the five uh, minutes or so that it, we go dark or what? Or a special we, lens to point at it? No, yeah, yeah. For the, in, in order in order to uh, I don't know if it's for the five minutes to, when we go dark or when it's light. Yeah, um, and going dark. But you need a lens for the iPhone. We'll we'll need a lens for our DJI. Osmo, oh, right. we'll so need our lens for our Insta 360, and I, I don't I don't want to miss uh, Osbot here. Osbot, little that's... Osbot. Yeah. Hello, Osbot. How are you? How you doing? <laughs> um, so we're gonna need lenses for that. Well, maybe Stacy can help us. Maybe as a Plus, expert I, in space. What I do know, we have to we have to get either a telescope or binoculars. Okay. Uh, and they have a lot a, a lot of selections. <laughs> You probably so, have binoculars because now I'm in a state of confusion because I I go I, I, research I, I go on Amazon. The best <laughs> you'll have the best solution. The best telescope for and then they give you a list, and I think it's the Celatron. I think that's the one. With, oh, you did some research on this. Yeah. yeah, but we still have to get the one the one to shoot it. Okay, it's not, not going to happen for seventy five years again. Oh, this is our own one. It's a total eclipse. Okay, we have to make this count. Yeah, we got I have to absolutely make it count. We do, and maybe Stacy can help us. We'll we'll stay in touch, and he can consult. I will get you some very fancy eclipse sunglasses. Fancy? <laughs> they won't even. No, actually, it, 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 the 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 not that I understand it. I'm trying. Uh, essentially, uh, given the way the the sun and the moon and the the, the moon is going to pass in front of the sun and it'll be there it'll be there uh, long enough so that as it as it points toward your part of the earth be total darkness total darkness i've forgotten how long I, maybe, maybe it's like 12 minutes eight minutes it's very short very short and then it'll move on and it if you look at the map which we'll put up we'll, we'll put, that, we'll put it up tomorrow if we don't have it we'll put it up tomorrow it's a map that it, it, it almost looks a bit like a rainbow uh, through the northeast. It go, I think it goes down to New Orleans. It comes through states like Kentucky and Tennessee. It then gets through um, Pennsylvania and then uh, the western part of New York, like Buffalo and Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls is like a perfect place to watch it. Oh, wow. And That's then magical. And then it comes across upper New York State to the uh, so, sort of sort of uh hugging the uh new york canadian border and then it goes through the new england states into canada so uh if you live in the northeast buffalo is a great place to watch it niagara falls is a great place to watch it plattsburgh is a city on the uh, new york canadian border it's so uh, uh one of the entry point cities and I thought Plattsburgh would be better if we went there because it wouldn't be quite as crowded. We'd have a little more room yeah. to operate. I'm, I'm going to do some reading and on then this. there are three we're looking at in in in, uh, in New Hampshire. That's right. Well, we'll stay in touch with Stacy. Maybe she can help us with all of this space stuff coming up. And, of course, she's a world-renowned artist. And we'll see her again. She's a longtime can't listener and viewer. Can we see some of viewer. her art? <laughs> Say that again. You, some you can actually you see her art. You got any pictures? It, it, yeah. It's like well, on my just, Instagram. Yeah, send it to me. Brooklyn, that's the way we well, play. Yeah, and I'll, I'll take a look. We'll put some up on the screen. You got any pictures? And we'll have St and we'll have Stacy back on real soon. So thank you, well, Stacy. Kind of, how, how do you describe your art before we get okay. to see it? Well, you know what? I actually, um, my background is 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 
an art historian. I did my master's at Sotheby's Institute in London mm -hmm. like a very long time ago. So I've been an art historian. And then for the, my art is basically um, pretty much like putting old masters on the blockchain. And I, I do a lot of performance art, different things like that too. Go go to Instagram. That has like my most recent work. Why don't you tell our audience your, your Instagram handle? It's at Stacy Engman, S T A C Y E N G M A N. And that will that is probably the easiest way to see the the recent moon launch and also the the artworks that have gone what? to the moon, including uh Van Gogh's old masters and um Monet's and a lot of the great pieces that were in the Metropolitan Museum of Art and, and other So when you when you say uh moon it's work. um so basically we took the Falcon 9 from uh from SpaceX um you mentioned a lot right. earlier so it was uh such an honor to be on that that private um rocket and we actually landed on the moon. We landed these artworks on the moon. Right. It's the first time art has gone to the moon. And so it's um, it's a part of the museum, um, like a museum that's created on the moon. It's the first museum of the moon and there are 200 and some artists. And um, so the collection that I curated is called Masterworks and Magnificent Gems. It's basically right. all of the great old masters um, it, it's kind of like rendered in the style of my mark so um, so so people who watch it if whoever ends up there will get a sort of an idea of what art yeah definitely yeah art is and, like a, a general idea right. right and and there are actual artifacts too that people can it's supposed to last up to a billion years wow so if if we're disordered in space no. by some martians or something not in the big scheme of things there's not a lot of time of billion years. <laughs> So, but yeah, it's it's a lovely. Think story. about you think about how long this universe has existed, and how big it is. And people are worried about emissions of CO two. It's <laughs> totally, uh, excuse me for getting off on it, but it's totally irrational. Uh, from the beginning of of uh, global warming, then that had to be changed to climate change because. They're not sure about global warming. Might have been cooling. So I, I don't even know what climate change means. People ask me, you know, do you believe in climate change? So I begin always this way, being sarcastic. I say climate change is not something you believe in. You believe in religions. This is a scientific fact, or it isn't. Belief is about a religion. See, and you probably think of it as a religion, which is why you're asking me the question. Um, I, I say, well, of course I believe in climate change what what th this is um this 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 is winter and we're just going over into spring and then then after spring we'll have summer and then after summer we'll have fall and it'll start all over again yes. so who cannot believe in climate change and how the hell are you making billions selling people on your you're teaching them about climate change of course we have climate change are we going to stop the climate from changing do you realize how small we are, how insignificant we are, how tiny we are in that big, big universe? Jesus, you can send up, I mean, even, even Carrie's airplane can't affect it. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Stacey. Uh, it's such a pleasure. Thank you. We'll, we'll so be in much. touch on our space adventures. Up Looking next, forward, this gentleman is a longtime listener to the radio program and the live stream. And I know that because he will often text us during the show. Uh, both radio program and the evening show. Michael, you got to stay nice and close uh, due to our camera situation this evening. Yep, that's good. Yeah, Michael Walsh, good friend of the show. Michael, how are you? I'm good, Rudy. Nice to be with you again. Nice to be with you. So I'd like to ask you a question, drawing on your former federal prosecutor background. It's my understanding that going back 40 years or more, there's a, a statute, the Foreign uh, Corrupt Business Practices Act. Yeah. And that was created to to uh, control and prosecute our, our corporate executives if they paid bribes and things of that nature to gain hundred overseas. And the, the Justice Department has been prosecuting people with very strict standards uh, um, and putting them in jail for 40 plus years if they do something that violate those standards. So as we look at what's going on in Congress today, and there, I hear the, all the 
here's the check from Biden and, and the money and this and that. My understanding is, is that if they use the same standards to prosecute U.S. government executives as looking at what's being done today, it would be an open and shut case and the Bidens would be sentenced. Actually, that, correct, or, that, correct or not? It, you're absolutely correct. I mean, that's one of the things that Bob Belinsky uh, tried to say to Dopey uh, AOC. Uh, the first one that he mentioned was the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. When she said, well, what crime did he commit? And he said corruption, foreign, he meant Foreign Corrupt right. Practices Act, RICO, and uh, and um, FISA. FISA is the Foreign Agents Registration Act. Uh, those are three clear crimes they committed, including Joe. Uh, you know, they, 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 they hide the evidence from you. Even the Republicans hide the evidence from you. The, there's a, a text from Hunter to his daughter that explains the entire racketeering enterprise. It says, quote, for 30 years, I've paid all the expenses of the family and they still don't respect me. And even with that, for 30 years, Pop has required me to give him half of my salary. Now, that that's a financial arrangement that explains completely uh, what their deal is. I mean, the 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 question is why would uh, why would the wife of the mayor of Moscow give Hunter Biden three point five million? Mm -hmm. He's a, a broken down drug addict, right? He, he's going to spend it on drugs and prostitutes. Well, she's giving it to him to get to the one commodity the Biden family has in its orbit that's worth three point five million the vice president's office. And that explains to you how they divvied it up. So Hunter would take the money and then over a period, he would, he, he, Hunter paid for everything for the Biden family. So Joe had, didn't have to spend any money, which is a way of paying him a bribe. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they kept uh, moving money to him through a guy named Eric Schwerin. All of it is approvable on paper. I mean, he should have been in jail four years ago for it. And the amount of money is astounding. I mean, I prosecuted corruption cases. Uh, when I saw the money here, I was like, I've never heard of anything like this. For even like a $3.5 million bribe is crazy. But uh, Ch China, in a five year period, paid him at least $21 million. Uh, the, the, there's no doubt they paid him that. The question is, did Joe get that money? Well, according to Hunter, he got half of it. According to Hunter. I don't know why we need anything else other than Hunter telling us that. that that's the way we convict people, on testimony. I mean, uh, the people that I convicted, the defense didn't agree. I, I would put somebody on the witness stand who said, Fat Tony Salerno told me to murder somebody. And Fat Tony's lawyer said he didn't. And then the jury decided the guy's telling the truth. In this particular case, people say, well, maybe Hunter isn't telling the truth. Well, maybe any witness isn't telling the truth. <laughs> I mean, but, uh, hard to understand why he wouldn't be telling the truth to, a, to, to, his, to his daughter. It sounds logical. It kind of fits the scheme because you, 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 when you leave all this, you say to yourself, why the hell would people give Hunter Biden money? Now, you got to be really stupid not to figure out to bribe the senator and the vice president, because that's the one commodity uh, the young lady just on, you know, she has art. That's a commodity. I'm sure it's a lot better than Hunter's. Uh, <laughs> but they have a commodity, and that's the Biden brand. And what do you get for it? What you get for it is subtle, maybe not so subtle. From the day that Biden became president, he hasn't done a damn thing in the best interest of the United States with regard to China. And he's done many things looking like he's bribed by China. For example, he closed down an air base that's 400 miles from China. Oh, okay. yeah. Why would you do that? What would it possess you as the president of the United States 
knowing that our biggest enemy is China, that someday we may be involved in a war with China, and we got the advantage of a base 400 miles from them. Why would you, why would you close that down unless you were compromised? Now, is it a coincidence? Do you close it down and you also got $21 million from them? I mean, I, I, I never had evidence like this in cases that I want. I mean, uh, the, the, the criminals don't come and explain to you exactly. You take the evidence and then you draw logical conclusions from it. It's a logical conclusion that they were bribing Joe Biden. Or how about the, the, what we were talking about before, the fentanyl? He has three times met with Xi Jinping to reduce the amount of fentanyl coming in the United States. And all it's done is go like this. Xi Jinping listens to him and says, you know, yeah, well, I own you. Screw you. Uh, this year, the most people will die from fentanyl overdoses ever before in our history. Uh, it looks like those meetings haven't done any good. But you cut off fentanyl, you cut off a lot of money for China. And I also think you cut off a way in which they're, they are conducting the pre-war with us. They're killing us. I mean, they, it would take a lot of troops to kill 120,000 Americans. They're killing them with fentanyl. We don't get a chance to kill them back. Uh, they're sort of getting, it's like a, a twofer or a threefer, right? We pay for the ammunition. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we pay for the ammunition and they kill us. So they get they get rid of 120,000 of our, of, our, of our people. Quick question. Yeah. These loan repayments, okay? If yeah, You mean for the students? No, 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 no. The Bidens, okay? Yeah. Loan repayments. Oh, they're loans. <laughs> loan repayments. That have no documents. Okay. Well, if I loan you money. Right. And not $5 or $10, but $400,000, I probably had it wired, wrote a check, which you cashed, and went into an account. So there's some evidence at the beginning of a loan, the creation of a loan. Even if there's not a loan document, there's evidence of, of money that was lent. I haven't heard anything that supports when these loans that are being repaid, when was it Sorry. created? Where's the documentation? None. So then why? As far as I know, there's none. So then why is not? So th th therefore, it's false. Of course, it's just a false statement. Absolutely false. They're not loans. There are no documents. I've done loans with friends, and you write out it. You write. You write something, even if it's a, even if it's a rather informal. Uh, you say, you know, I uh, I loaned you a hundred hundred thousand dollars, let's say. And uh, the person promises to pay it back in two years or three years. Maybe you waive the interest, but you have something. You, you have something to show in this. You have because something to show. Conveying some money. Well, of course, because uh, you have to explain the movement of the money. Yeah. And so if I, if I, if I, if so, if I give you a hundred thousand dollars, something has to be done with that. If I just give it to you and it's not a loan, it's a gift. Right. I got to pay gift tax. You have to pay. Yeah. You know, I do. I know. If I, if we do a loan, then. Uh, and I forgive the loan at some point, it becomes income for you. And you have to pay taxes on it. Right. So this isn't just a private thing. The government's involved in this, which they're lying about. But we're not focusing on this in these. Of course we're not. Why? I don't know if the Republicans are doing it on purpose. They're not really focusing on the the strongest and like I it drives me nuts that they don't focus on that text that I told you about. About 50% going to the old man mm -hmm. of his salary. And, right. Hey, go explain that. 50 and They also don't focus on one that is devastating, where he explains to his father that he's a danger to his uh, nieces and nephews because the psychiatrist doesn't want him around them because he abuses them. He tells his father that. Father does nothing about it. Yeah. Nothing. Okay, I want to hurt his political career. He doesn't give a damn if his grandchildren are abused. Well, wow. that's a crime. When I saw that in the hard drive, Bernie Carrick and I drove all the way to Delaware and gave it to the Delaware police and uh, threw, threw it on the desk of the com commander who's got like all these ridiculous medals, which should be stuck up his. <laughs> and I said, then what the hell are you going to do with this? This little girl, th these two, this little girl and little boy, the law of Delaware requires you to visit their house and make sure this isn't true. Did you visit the Biden house? <laughs> Sounded like Biden, you know. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 they have corrupted us to a point that I never thought was possible. I mean, I love, I loved our justice system. It 
you know, really, I mean that. I really loved it. I love being a lawyer. I love being a prosecutor. I love being a defense lawyer. I loved representing Trump because I, in, in his case, I, I got involved because I was in the 2016 campaign. I didn't think his lawyers were handling the first impeachment right. And and uh, I knew he was innocent because I was there. I, mean, I knew there was no Russian involvement. I didn't have time for Russian involvement. I was with him at times for, you know, 18 hours a day. He wasn't talking. And he, and he talks in front of, right in front of you. He, he'll have the most, in, <laughs> most embarrassing conversations in front of you. I mean, but he's a very open guy. If, and if he were doing this with the Russians, he'd have been talking all the time. Hey, Leonid, you know. Plus, he didn't know it was a crime. I think it might not be a crime. <laughs> When they when when I first explained to him what they were investigating him for, he said, "Yeah, that sounds wrong, but is that a crime?" I said, "Well, it's a, a questionable crime because the crime, uh, the crime would have been, believe it or not, an a, a election campaign violation. It would have been that he that the information that the Russians gave him was a contribution to the, his campaign." And you can't get a contribution, money contribution, from a foreigner. And therefore, that's a crime. Right. But the question is, can you equate information with money? Some judges say yes. Some judges say no. They tried um, um, Senator Edwards on, on this. He got acquitted. Mm -hmm. And the judge threw the case out, the rest of the case out, saying, uh, I don't think it's illegal. Um, so it's like a really questionable, it's like all the ones they do on him, a really questionable crime. So if Jamie Comer is listening to this right now, mm -hmm. what would you say, how would you suggest that they focus Get those right now to try to, to nail this down? Because take that it's text and, away. Take that text and get Hunter to explain what the hell is he talking about when he says he's give, he gave half, half the money to his old man. Let him say he's lying about it. Uh, but get it into the minds of the American people that uh, there's an expl there's a very logical explanation for how this RICO enterprise worked, and um, uh, that includes uh, uh, how his two brothers and his sister-in-law collected money for him. I mean, there's a whole. I, I never got to investigate his brother James, who's a total scoundrel. Uh, got. A large percentage of a $1.5 billion housing deal in Iraq. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you needed the American <laughs> government to get you into it. And uh, it happened at the time that Joe was, uh, Biden, love to use this word, the point man for Iraq. So it would have been very, it was very easy for Joe to slip him in. Part of his portfolio. Now, nobody has looked at how much of that was kicked back to Joe. Yep. By James yeah. again, former, but former corruption arrest. And of course, it's James and the wife that are, that are sending the money. Right, uh, but that was the Chinese money, and the money gets transferred on the same day they get the money from China. Yeah, but it was for paying a loan, of which there's no document. Wow, I agree, my friend. Right. <laughs> well, well, let's try to fit one more in. We're welcome okay. to soccer time. We can't forget our good friend, uh, and a great American patriot, mm -hmm. Andrea Howard. She was with us in. New Hampshire, of course. First of all, thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you to Michael. Thank you. And hello to Andrea, again, who was with us in New Hampshire. New Hampshire. With yes. the, uh, what did you call yourselves? You, you, it's not, it's different than the group of, of uh, women in South Carolina, right? The MAGA Trump ladies. The MAGA Trumpets. Yes, the MAGA Trumpets. That's separate, right? Yes. That's another group. Uh, all friends, I'm sure. Uh, but you, but of course, Andrea was, was with us in New Hampshire with a lot of our other great friends. So thank you, Andrea. Andrea has a question for you, Mayor. Yes. So it's regarding the move up just a little bit, Andrea. So to the mic, much yes. close to the mic. Yeah. Okay. It's regarding the 2020 Georgia case. Yeah, that, that one worries me a little. Good. If if uh, I get convicted of that case, I go to jail until I die. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Justice is going to be served. Navarro at least got only four months. But they want to put Trump and I in jail for 20 years. And the fact that uh, the Trump team appeal for a uh, funny Willis to yeah we are we're we're, go we're we're going to appeal 
and say that Fannie had, for a lot of reasons, that Fannie had to be thrown off the case because the judge's decision makes no sense. Uh, either nobody gets thrown off the case or they both get thrown off the case because they did it together. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of stupid to say, well, you did it together. You violated the, the, the canons of ethics together. But you can pick which one's going to take the punishment. Who ever heard of that? It's like the two of us rob a bank and the judge says, well, I'm not going to put both of you in jail. Uh, you decide. You want to go to jail or do you want to go to jail? I'll go to jail. It's ridiculous. The, 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 the judge made clear that the act was ser seriously unethical. There are also all sorts of reasons why she should be recused from the case. They never even explored the fact that Wade made two trips to the White House during this case. There's no reason to communicate with the White House about a criminal case in Georgia, unless you're trying to coordinate it as part of a whole group of cases to persecute him, mm -hmm. to stop him from being president. The only interest the White House has in it is political. So he made two meetings there. He charged actually a lot for those two. He charged somehow he twice charged 24 hours of time. Wow. What did he just stayed up all night thinking about the case? Wow. Well, maybe he stayed up all maybe he's charging us. I don't want to say I'll probably get thrown off the air if I tell you what I think he was charging us. Do you have any hope? Maybe that's the only way. No, I can't. I shouldn't say do you have do you think they would have any chance with the appeal? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. I think the state of uh, uh, um, state of Georgia has got to think of its reputation to some extent. I mean, Fulton County looks like, you know, New York under Boss Tweed. Uh, I mean, a, of, a certain number of their mayors have gone to jail. One of them resigned recently. Uh, there, there are people that say it's one of the most corrupt cities in America. And this sounds like it. And even the judge, the judge's decision was very questionable. Very, very questionable. I mean, he a lot of stuff he avoided. Uh, there, there's a piece of testimony of hers that's unbelievable. She says when she tries to explain how she reimbursed her boyfriend for the trips, she says, I reimbursed him in cash. cash. Well, how did you have so much cash? <laughs> well, when I finished my campaign, I took cash from my campaign, campaign money. and I used it. Well, you can't take cash from your campaign. There's a name for that. It's called stealing. <laughs> it's called stealing. And the judge doesn't even, the judge ignores it. Like, it doesn't matter that she's stealing from the campaign. It doesn't matter that she's communicating improperly with the White House. I mean, that should lead to the dismissal of the whole damn case. Uh, none of this matters. And she gets a choice of whether it's going to be her or the boyfriend in the case, which is silly. So I think it's, we're going to appeal it. And I think there's a good chance uh, we'll win it. And I think ultimately there's a good chance the case will get thrown out by some court yeah. that just says we can't take this. I mean, this is this is this is just too damaging to America to have a case like this. We look like we we look like uh, Nazi Germany. Jeez, I mean, this is uh, this. Everybody knows they're prosecuting him to stop him from being president. They don't. I mean. Uh, the, the judge has already dismissed the count that started the whole case, which is, co is his conversation with the attorney general, where they say he was like um, extorting him. All, all, all the president was saying is we, we, we had probably about 200,000 questionable votes to pick from. Uh, and he was saying to Rassenberger, you mean with all of these irregularities, with all of these, uh, with um, at that time, there was a report that um, 65,000 underage people voted. Uh, turned out it was a lot less. But I'll tell you what, there was a lot. A lot of out-of-state people voted. M more than the margin of the election. Like 20,000 out-of-state people weren't residents of Georgia anymore, which leads to, if you go investigate it, the conclusion that maybe they really didn't vote, but somebody voted for them. And they were putting in phony ballots 
But then you got to attach that ballot to somebody. So you pick out of state people that are left in the rolls so you can do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, why doesn't uh, Georgia is a crooked state. Uh, meanwhile, the governor is on their side, not ours, because he probably cheated. He probably cheated in 18 to become governor. Um, his his former chief of staff is is working for Dominion now. And the chief of staff for the for the secretary of state, Rassenberger, worked for Dominion. And that's only one part of it. And Kemp hates Trump. Because I think it's because it's the reason they all hate him because Trump knows who he is and what he is. Um, so we've got to keep things. Um, I think I think we're going to have things better organized in Georgia this time because I think well, you know, well we certainly I don't think the, I don't think the Republican Party is going to be fooled by Kemp this time. Hopefully, thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor, very much. Well, thank you, thank you. Ed, you got anything? What a great, great evening! What? Why don't we just? Why don't we at least uh, congr- uh, congratulate um, uh, the Mega Man, the Mega Man, Bernie, Bernie, uh, our friend, Bernie Moreno, Bernie Moreno, big victory! I got a picture of him up right now. Put up a picture of Bernie, okay? Bernie Moreno, that's our guy, of Mega Man. Great, great guy. There he is on the screen. He's gonna. He's. Um, He's got the distinction, and you don't get a distinction like this too often. He's going to run against a communist, Sherrod Brown. That's right. And he's so red, it's hard to see him. That's right. And Bernie's a great American. I talked to him last night uh, following his victory. Wasn't sure I'd get through, right? I'm guessing he's probably getting hit up by everybody and their brother. Uh, he's a big fan of the mayor, uh, respects everything you have done, and we'll have him on so real me, soon. Uh, and he's the best candidate to take on Sherrod Brown. He's the best one that could come out of that primary. Despite what they're saying, yeah, but tell me, tell me what, um, uh, what I mean. Uh, uh, can we beat? Can we beat Sherrod Brown? Yes, with 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 Trump at the top of the ticket, Ohio. You know, maybe in the past it was more of a bellwether. I think you and you and I have talked Trump, about earlier Trump, today. Uh, Trump probably Republican. wins Ohio by ten percent or. Better. That's right, and maybe Brown takes up a little bit of the blue collar vote if they're able to still hang on to that working class Democrat brand. But I don't think he can make up a ten point difference, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But but I and he's he very left. I mean, he's not like uh, it could be hard for him to pose. This isn't like a dog Democrat, right? He's not gonna. He's not gonna. He can't pose as a mansion or uh, exactly or cinema or something like that. That's right, sir. Well, that's good. What that's a great. Good. I mean, yeah. Well, well, we, we had a great night. night we're Thank you get... very very much. Thank you for coming. Uh, Let's close with wishing our best of Peter Navarro. I think that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, Peter. Uh, even though you probably aren't going to hear this, maybe we'll send you a copy of it. Every, every everyone here uh, is united in supporting you uh, and understanding you're making a terrible sacrifice for us. Because, as Trump says, you know they're not really after you or him or even me. They're after the American people. They're after our country. They want to take it away from us. They want to make it into a one world Soros, Klaus Schwab, Prince Obama wonderland uh, where they're all billionaires and we're starving. Um, and we're not going to let them, right? Oh. And uh, it's a shame to say this, but pro- probably you're going to jail and our uh, 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 publicizing that is going to get Trump even more votes. American people aren't stupid. They, they know what's going on. And when they go overboard like this and put a decent man like you in jail, it's frightening. So I know you're strong enough to handle it, but it's still terrible. And we love you and we'll all pray for you. God bless you. God bless you, Peter. And God bless the United States of America. We'll see you tomorrow. It's to bring to bear the principle of common sense and rational discussion to the issues of our day. America was created at a time of great turmoil, tremendous disagreements, anger, hatred. There was a book written in 1776 that guided much of the discipline of thinking that brought to us the discovery of our freedoms, of our God-given freedoms. It was Thomas Paine's Common Sense, written in 1776, 
one of the first American bestsellers in which Thomas Paine explained by rational principles the reason why these small colonies felt the necessity to separate from the Kingdom of Great Britain and the King of England. He explained their inherent desire for liberty, for freedom, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, the ability to select the people who govern them. And he explained it in ways that were understandable to all the people, not just the elite. Because the desire for freedom is universal. The desire for freedom adheres in the human mind and it is part of the human soul. This is exactly the time we should consult our history. Look at what we've done in the past and see if we can't use it to help us now. We understand that our founders created the greatest country in the history of the world. The greatest democracy, the freest country, a country that has taken more people out of poverty than any country ever. All of us are so fortunate to be Americans. But a great deal of the reason for America's constant ability to self-improve is because we're able to reason, we're able to talk, we're able to analyze. We are able to apply